Welcome to Legal 123s with Berta Dotto. Legal issues simplified through real client stories and real world experiences. Creating simplicity in three, two, one. Welcome back to another episode of Legal 123s with Berta Dotto. I'm your host, Brad Dotto, with my co host, Michael Bird. As a business and healthcare law firm, we represent clients in multiple sectors and multiple specialties, especially healthcare. Mm-hmm. This season, we are searching for common ground for our diverse audience, and we'll be bringing in many guests to help us. This season's theme is the universal language business. Love it, Michael. Well, speaking of love, you know I love me some football. Uh, well, that has nothing to do with it, and your timing is pretty terrible. Uh, this episode is being released in the middle of the off season, and so I'm getting suspicious that you're trying to shoehorn some Saints talk in here, and we just we are going to lose our our no the, Saints talk the listeners. Yes, okay. Other All than right. your dad, he'll okay. stay with yes, us. he'll stay yeah. with us. Well, you know, when I was preparing for today's show um, on the universal language business, I couldn't stop thinking about the best and most cliche football quotes, which is, uh, you know, as you can imagine, it's own unique language from when we have players or coaches or even the owners start coming up with stuff. Well, as you know, Brad, I'm a Cowboys fan. And as you also know, the last 25 plus years of my life have been very painful. <laughs> yes. Um, and you can relate because most of the first part of your life was that way as a Saints fan. That's true. But there uh, are some really good Cowboys quotes. And really, I mean, I should go back, really go back to my childhood when the Cowboys were really good. But it's so hard. Once Jerry Jones became the owner, he's got, we could do a whole episode. We on, could do. That's true. On all of his quotes. But a couple of my favorites, of course, that everyone knows, is, of course, Jimmy Johnson with the famous, how about them Cowboys? Yeah. Do you know when and what situation he said that? Um, after, is it an NFC win the very first time they were going to the Super Bowl? Is that right? Yeah, when they beat the 49ers That's right. in San Francisco. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then, and uh, don't fact check me on that, but okay. I'm pretty sure that's right. I think that's right. Okay. Um, and then... Uh, Jerry Jones, I mean, I was trying to look up some of the bizarre ones we've heard over the years. We would be explicit here. And uh, yes, we didn't. But there was a time when he started coming under scrutiny because it had been several seasons since the uh, wins. And he was still. Yeah, but the the beginning of that (laughs) time. Okay, okay. And someone came on the radio station that we listen to all the time. And, uh, and, he uh, or maybe it was a reporter. I can't remember the circumstance, but he started getting not happy Ooh. about the questions. And he said his quote was, "Do you like those three Super Bowl rings? I hope you do. I hope you do very much." As a response to a reporter, and so that gets thrown out in uh, the uh, radios as drops even to this day. Gotcha. All right, those are some good ones. All right, I have a few other ones. I'll try to stay away from the Saints. Um, one of my former neighbors, I don't know if you heard of this guy named Peyton Manning, but he had a funny one. Is Humble pre- brag. Yeah, I'm oh, sorry. <clears throat> Pressure is something you feel when you, don't know, when you don't know what the hell you're doing. I like that one. And then since it's not – I'm not allowed to talk about the Saints, but the former head coach of the Saints, Jim Mora, who also happened to be the coach of Peyton. Was he your other neighbor? Yes. Uh-huh. When he's like, playoffs? Don't talk about playoffs. You got to be kidding me. Playoffs. I just want to win a game. Do you remember that one at all? Uh, that was so awesome. Your, your voice just, just I was trying to do my Jim back. Mora. Mm-hmm. And then my favorite, of course, is um, you know, Joe Theismann, who was a former NFL quarterback and ESPN announcer. He's trying to get really deep once, and he said, nobody in football should be called a genius. A genius is a guy like Norman Einstein. Mm. <laughs> well, he proved his point. Yes. He's a guy in football, yes. and he should not be called a ge- genius. This and um, you know, Joe Theismann was a quarterback for the Redskins who were very hated by yes, the Cowboys. Yes, so they were. I was not a fan of his. Yeah. Um, okay. Well, now that you've managed to talk about football in the middle of the off offseason, um, what in the world does that have to do with today? Okay. So, again, when I was preparing for the day, I was thinking back to when I met today's guest. We met him in Las Vegas. We were all there speaking at this orthopedic conference. And as you know, currently the Las Vegas Raiders, formerly of L.A. and Oakland, now is there. And they were dominated forever by one person. 
Well, you got to put a big asterisk by it since the Raiders have been there for like a year. Yeah. But I'm guessing you're speaking of Al Davis. That's right. Yeah. Yes, right. Okay. Al. Al is, if you remember this, he was actually a coach before he actually became the owner of the Raiders. He has, like Jerry Jones, a ton of great quotes like, you don't just adjust, you just, you just dominate. But, of course, his most famous one is, just win, baby. Um, and this Vegas connection to Al's quote, when I kept thinking about, again, preparing for today's episode, we, today's guest, Brett Spark, you know, that's what he does with his clients. He tries to find a way for them to dominate and win. Oh, wow. Way to shoehorn that in there, buddy. Uh-huh. <laughs> um, but, yes, Al Davis was uh, was colorful, to say the least, and not surprisingly, I think uh, he's uh, an idol of Jerry Jerry Jones. Yes, probably. They're, they're yes. cut from the same cloth. Yeah. But these funny and sometimes you know inspirational quotes also remind me of some serious laughter we had when we uh, first met Brett and uh, his business partner Jerry, Jeremy Carroll at dinner in Vegas because we started making fun of their business partner Chad Smoke. Um, who obviously was there with us because he's a Pittsburgh Steelers fan. And somehow there became a running line of Ben Roethlisberger jokes, which I didn't even know was a thing. Yes, I didn't either, but, but it was so awesome. I laughed so hard, and now he's uh, – unfortunately for that joke string, he's retired. I know, and it was it really did get out of hand because it just got too easy. Sad that Ben retired. We lost all this material that we could make fun of Chad. But I, actually, Chad was a really good sport about us making fun of him – and his idol. But, Michael, I think not enough football talk. Let's bring on Brett. All right, Brett. Well, I'm so glad that you could join today in a brief intro on Brett. And is uh, Brett began his career with a, a large health system in Minnesota and has le- uh, since led several uh, private practice groups kind of on the administrative side. Uh, Brett is the current um, executive director for the Minnesota Epilepsy Group and founded his own business, which is how we all connected. He founded, uh, he's the president and co-founder of Aurorus. Uh, Aurorus it maximizes contract revenue for private practices through negotiation and leveraging of proprietary data. Aurorus maximizes contract revenue for private practice. Um, and I'd love to just first welcome Brett and, and, um, uh, and hear a little bit more, uh, you know, a uh, brief uh, about Aurora's. Yeah. Thanks guys. I, I appreciate you bringing me on. It's, it's fantastic to see you guys again. And I think the Ben Roethlisberger jokes just continue on more in a retirement fashion <laughs> now for, for him. So I, I don't think we let those die that, that quick. Okay, but. good. We have yeah. permission. Yeah. I like it. Yeah. Um, no, I appreciate you, you having me, um, you know, a little bit about, you know, my background. I've, I've spent my entire career in the healthcare space. Um, as you mentioned before, I, I started with a large health system in the Minnesota, Minneapolis area here and, uh, spent about 13 years working with that, uh, group in a number of different fashions, um, mostly on the care delivery side. And then, um, as you mentioned, I moved into the private practice space and I was um, kind of summoned away from the large health system world many years ago, um, which has be- become very valuable um, and and ran several different groups as a administrator CEO level and, and a few different administrator or a few different uh, service lines there. And then about a year and a half ago now started Aurorus. And um, you, you mentioned we're, we're focused on payer contracting and a lot of our attention is pushed towards private practices uh, because there's just not enough resources in the space. And payer contracting, um, reimbursement methodologies, it, it's a complex world. It's a complex world for somebody that lives and breathes it every single day, let alone Um, having a a private practice that it's your secondary fashion. You know, we have physicians that are trying to do this in some groups. We have administrators that are trying to do it in in some groups and there's just not, not enough time in the day. And so we, we wanted to create a a business that really filled the the gap with resources. That's fascinating. And so, yeah, Aurorus, we have you know, payer contractors, we have negotiators in our group, we have legal experts in our group, 
we have account managers in our groups and we have a data analytics team that that really gives a, a full comprehensive approach to the payer contracting world um, and, and allows these practices to be more competitive when they're going into the, the negotiation realm. Well, talk about, uh, so you, you went out on your own a year and a half ago, which is exciting and scary all at the same mm-hmm. time. We talk about mm-hmm. kind of your experiences uh, in your professional career, you know, that led you to a identify this need and kind of gave you the unique ability uh, to be able to to lead Aurora's, you know, with this kind of this business platform. Yeah, it's it's a good question, and you know, a- after working with several different groups in the private practice space, uh, I started doing some consulting in the same type of fashion, but more um, quick in and quick out for groups that were mid to to you know large size organizations and. I, I was planning on, on just going down that path, being a consultant and supporting private practice from the administrative uh, role. And after doing it for a couple of years and working with a lot of different groups, I, I started thinking about, you know, what's the the one thing that I would do with every single group that I went into? And on day one, I'm looking at their payer contracts. You know, wh- where's the revenue coming from in the business? Um, what payers are paying well, what payers haven't been touched for years on years. Um, and, and then I would go out and, and try and renegotiate for them and, and try and create revenue without going to the physicians and asking them to work evenings or weekend schedules and, and add, add days in there, which nobody is pleased to do. Um, and so, you know, through that, I really identified that there's a massive gap in, in the private practice space, especially for resources to be able to, to understand the need and, and really be able to take the time and effort to go out and get up, get movement with insurance companies. And do y'all help with, uh, if a practice is having trouble with collections with a payer and they're having kind of conflict and appeal type stuff, is that something that you guys do or is it more on the front end with the negotiation uh, of the, it, it, yeah, it's more on the front end with the negotiation. We, but it's a question that we get all the time from either client partners or from groups that are reaching out. And so we've partnered with a few different firms that that do the denial management, the AR management, really the the back office functionalities. Mm-hmm. Um, but we we've, we've kind of formed our lane in the front end process of, of actually negotiating fee schedules, negotiating those reimbursement rates and, and hitting that. Yeah. And I think for our audience that is listening to this and, and trying to, uh, who's not in the world where you deal with payers or just our, our audience here in the business world, you know, I think the most important takeaway that you can have when you partner with someone like Brett's group is that, you know, you show up and you work, you know, the whole nine hours and you're dead tired at the end of the day, well, if you have the right payer contracts, you're going to get paid more no matter what. It doesn't matter how many hours you put in. It's what is someone willing to pay for that. And it's not how much you bill for it. So you could bill $10,000 for something, but if they're only going to pay you $2,000 for it. You know, It does not make a difference. And I think a lot of people don't realize that when they first start practicing. Or as you said, it was a great example, is they just continue to renew and they don't look at the numbers. And all of a sudden, their numbers start dropping. That's what I loved when we met you in Vegas, just understanding that is a need that a lot of people don't see. So let's Yeah, and it's it's variable. You know, the, these price points are are so variable based on specialty, based on geographic area. There's so many factors that play into it and the complexity of it, you know, it, it's just not it's not worth the time of a lot of these groups to dig into them and then they ultimately just start taking what they can get and they'll go 3 4 5 years without actually you know, being given an opportunity to go out and negotiate. And, and that's where we, we come into play and try and fill that void and, and really demystify some of the, the process itself, but also open the eyes of, of the shareholders within the businesses on, on what's current state and where do we see some opportunity. Sure. Well, as Michael started this episode, he, you know, he mentioned that this season we're really concentrating the universal language of business. So you know, with your background and all these different other healthcare groups now and, and starting your own business, talk about some things that you've noticed that in your experience that there, there, there are certain commonalities that you've seen. Yeah. Yeah. I think, 
you know, that the value add of a strong workforce or strong leadership team has become so apparent when I was doing consulting with a lot of groups, Mm -hmm. you know, that was a lot of where my focus went. Initially, I'd look at payer contracts and I'd be looking at the leadership team, you know, who, what's the, the reporting structure? What does the leadership team look like? Um, and we're we're now finding ourselves doing the same thing as we're building out our team from scratch at Aurora's as well is, you know, the heavy focus on having the right people in the right seats. It's a cliche, you know, kind of way to look at it. But you you have so much disruption in in private practice or in any really business environment that I've been in when you have the wrong talent in the wrong seat or the wrong you know, type of um, skill set, you know, trying to to put the puzzle together. And so I think, you know, one of the things that I've pieced together as we're building out Aurora's is it, it's a really important focus that, that you build out the correct service lines with the right people in the right seats. It's a great it makes point. me really sad because I hear you saying that, that Bernadetto's in trouble with Brad <laughs> being here, but... <laughs> It's okay. I'm gonna. Well, we've managed so far, yeah. despite you. I, what's, so. Is that why you keep having me sit out in the hall? Is yes. that the right seat for me? <laughs> it's really weird. You're like, no, no, this is your seat. Just stay in the hall. Don't answer the phone. <laughs> uh, as you can tell, we uh, we digress quickly <laughs> into making fun of each other whenever we can. Um, so yeah, that's that's awesome. I love that observation, and you know, I love just also to kind of flip the coin and go with it where you want, but just to hear some lessons learned that uh, whether it's in your first, you know, 15 months of starting your own business or lessons learned that um, when you were kind of in that CEO or consulting role that, that maybe has saved you uh, as you've started your own business. Yeah. I think, you know, the communication platform, you know, I've adjusted internally, you know, it, just from myself, as I've worked with different groups, worked with different types of leaders that shine in with different types of, of either value add or different types of communication platforms. And so, you know, I think what I've personally tried to work on in, in the last several years here going into this is, is trying to create those lines of communication with those that are either working internally or directly with me. But also getting to know and and dig into on a personal level, how do the employees that I'm working with, how do the leaders that I'm working with want to be valued? And and what are things that I can do from my chair, um, whatever it may be with the group that I'm working with? You know, what can I do to really pull out the the best in them and, and show the value that they're bringing to the organization on a broader level? And, you know, we've done that with a number of different factors and but a lot of it can be just exposing what goes on day to day in in groups and everybody's busy everybody gets their own you know level of detail or level of of project work that happens and a lot of times it, there's no communication platform to really shine and and hone in on the wins that are going on between groups and the hard work that happens so i think that's a lot of what i've I've done it on a personal level and, and try to bring that out um, both with Aurora's and, and in any consulting organization I'm helping. Well, we, we definitely agree with communications. That is one of our core values is that our number one core value um, is to communicate. So you're, you're cor- we uh, will agree a hundred percent chasing you on as, as, as how important it is to be able to, to develop that. Um, so let's, you know, let's think about this. Now we, we've been building up to this moment now as to, what is one of the proudest strategies or accomplishments that you've done in, in your business or in your industry? You know, I, there's there's a lot of moments that that come to mind. And I think it, it, what's exciting is being able to work with so many different groups at Aurora's. You know, we see so many different specialties. We see so many different services um, going on in, in the healthcare field. And being able to have a direct impact on on a business either succeeding or or altering their their course to be able to become more profitable or to become more um, available to their patient base is is an exciting moment. But I think one of the the proudest and biggest things that you know we've done in the short term is um, where Jeremy, my business partner, and I are rolling out the the traction model, EOS model for Aurora's, and really it's a platform that 
focuses in on an accountability chart and it's very heavy on on growing the business in in the right way and multiplying the business over time um but gene wickman is the author of a the traction book and we've modeled that out and we've had our first two set full day sessions doing that and we've hired employees since doing that we've changed roles for employees and we've had to say goodbye to some employees in doing that but we've seen our our uh, organization grow rapidly um, through that process and so i think that's an exciting moment for me you know i i don't have a long history in the startup space you know my business partner jeremy does and that's kind of his background but i'm just a a healthcare guy at, at heart um, coming into the private um, kind of startup world and but it's been exciting to to put that into play and see it see how it has added value to our group and and we had a you know a really interesting conversation with your team in Vegas on traction and for the audience is not aware if you want to spend another minute to just kind of diving a little bit deeper into what it is yeah so like I had mentioned Gene Wickman um, is the author of the book um, but it takes a focused um, process into the accountability of the business and you put it into three different buckets is what we've done. We have a sales and marketing uh, team, we have an operations team, and we have a finance team with our business. And within those three categories of how our business operates, we have an accountability chart and build out the team based on the needs for that. Um, and what it really does is it brings the team together. You know, we have weekly what we call L10 meetings on Monday morning that involve each of those teams um, and they kick off the week with to do's, with big wins, with um, op opportunities that are coming forward. But really, it's a it's a touch point that engages the entire team and it allows us from a broader level to share some of the highlights of where we're going in the organization. And we added a scorecard, too. You know, so every single week our team gets a, a full report on what's changing. You know, how many new touch points have we had? How many new signed contracts have we had? Um, and that keeps them engaged in the goals. And let me ask you this now, with the great reshuffle, the great resignation, whatever verbiage you want to use, how do you think your new hires are, are adopting to the traction process or traction uh, platform? Yeah, I think... Um, you know, I think the increased level of understanding of the mission and kind of vision of the organization is valuable to the team. Um, and I think it engages, you know, we're a smaller organization, so it, it's easier said than done with some of these larger organizations that have several different service lines. But I think the exposure of, you know, here's where the organization is planning to go over the course of the next one, three and five years um, allows employees to to visualize where their role will be in the long term of the organization. And if, if they can't or if they don't see that, that's when there becomes some exposure that maybe they're not sitting in the right role. And it doesn't always mean that that it's not the right person, but it might mean that they're more suited for a different type of position within the group. And those things happened as we started to go through this model as well. We we had employees that moved from one category to another to tap in better with their skill set. And I think that's a that's an exciting part of, of the process. Yeah, similar to moving people around the right seat in the bus from good to great. That's yep. cool. Well, um, any final observations before we uh, say goodbye and, and uh, do our little legal wrap-up? <laughs> no, um, you know, it's exciting to to be able to get to know you guys, get to know the group. And it, and it's a really exciting time to be part of an organization that's in a growth mentality, which I think a, a lot of groups are right now. And I think, you know, digging into that and figuring out where there's value add in the, the business world, uh, specifically in the healthcare space right now, which is ever changing. Um, we're excited to be part of that and, and be able to, to lend an assisted hand and bring private practice back into the kind of profitable margins of the healthcare space. But we appreciate the, the opportunity to get to see you guys and, and talk through all these challenges. Well, we know that uh, we get the question a lot of who can help negotiate these contracts. We've been asked if we can do it and having a business that knows the, the, this specific niche is, is so great. And I'm sure you guys yeah. are going to just keep, 
keep growing. Um, well, so what we will next step, we'll say goodbye. Um, and then we'll go into a commercial. And on the other side, uh, Brad and I will share some legal insights from our discussion today. Thank you. Thanks guys. Many business owners use legal counsel as a last resort rather than as a proactive tool that can further their success. Why? For most, it's the fear of unknown legal costs. Bird Adato's Access Plus program makes it possible for you to get the ongoing legal assistance you need for one predictable monthly fee. That gives you unlimited phone and email access to the legal team so you can receive feedback on legal concerns as they arise. Access Plus, a smarter, simpler way to access legal services. Find out more. Visit birdadato.com today. Welcome back to Legal 123s with Birdado. I'm your host, Brad Otto. I'm still here with my co-host, Michael Bird. Now, Michael, as we said, this season, we're trying to find some common ground with our friends who keep joining us, which is all about the universal language business. And we're pretty excited to have Brett come along because he, he, he's really looking at it as in a very unique area. And you, you said this in the beginning of the episode is – really focusing on the payer contracts. And I think I wanted to take a bigger step back is, you know, a lot of our clients concentrate on patients, of course, because you want the patient to come through the door. And so our clients that don't take commercial or federal payers, sure, they, they don't even think twice about hiring someone like Brett. But the vast majority of medical practices out there do need to have some type of contract, the commercial or federal payer. And they don't realize how important it is of having great contracts and of ways to try to, to ne- renegotiate those contracts to get better terms and conditions. And that's where I think Brett comes in because, uh, you know, you, you can show up and, and work your tail off on a surgery. And you and I have had this conversation. And one time you bill it and it's $10,000, you get $8,000 reimbursement. And the next time you, it's a different insurance, you bill it at $10,000 and they only pay you 2000 So understanding when you're setting up all those patients, figuring out who you want to accept – it's a huge issue to, at the end of the day, your bottom line, the business side mm-hmm. of a medical practice. Yeah, I mean, if it's it's not uh, intuitive yeah. to think about the business of a medical practice. And, and I mean, all of us can relate to we have health insurance. Yep. And you show up to a practice and you've got your insurance and you want to be treated. That business, kind of going off of what you just said from a little different angle, um, you know, they either – have a contract with that with these various providers that says they'll get paid or they don't. And so when someone shows up and they don't have a contract, you go into a whole nother discussion about out of network and there's some people that do it, but there's a lot of downsides to it. The only way you can kind of control your outcome is to be in network, but the only way you can really control your outcome is to have someone as your advocate when you're negotiating those contracts, because as you might imagine, the health insurance companies just give you something to sign. (laughs) Yeah, no doubt. Well, and I think this just goes back to a lot of things that we see with these clientele is that they just want to show up and practice medicine and they forget about the business side of it. And, you know, and the next thing you know, they're limping and they're dragging themselves from, you know, one surgery to surgery, kind of like Ben Rothenberg um, (laughs) when he's uh, was on the field. Yeah. I mean, I, I can think of a story where, a guy, you know, a, a physician had someone and negotiated a contract with the various payers to deal with his special procedure. He got awesome reimbursements. Years later, he recruits somebody to join his practice who was doing some different things. He didn't even pay attention to that when he negotiated it. They didn't pay attention to it. And all of a sudden, you know, new doctor is getting paid way below market mm. for doing these procedures because they weren't you know, looking at and negotiating their contracts. But I don't know, do you have any final thoughts for today? Well, I guess my final thoughts is, you know, it's it's June, it's hot outside. I can't wait for football season to start. <laughs> yes. You? Yeah. Well, it's hard not to talk about football since we started the whole thing on it. And I'll just say this. I mean, if you can somehow – Talk about Ben Roethlisberger, who I've maybe thought of for five minutes in my life and end up <laughs> laughing for 30 minutes at a dinner, yes. then uh, you can just look at insurance contracts in a little different way. And if, perhaps if you get help, you'll be much happier about uh, your reimbursements than you would be had you not. 
talk to uh, someone like Brett. Well, Michael, that's all the time we have today, but don't worry, all our fans out there. We have another awesome um, returning guest, Michael, the one, the only, the Energizer Bunny, Terry Ross, will be coming and rejoining the show next week. Please tune in to hear what words she'll use and how many curse words we'll be able to count. Thanks again for joining us today. And remember, if you like this episode, please subscribe. Make sure to give us a five-star rating and share with your friends. You can also sign up for the Bertadotto newsletter by going to our website at bertadotto.com. Bertadotto is providing this podcast as a public service. This podcast is for educational purposes only. This podcast does not constitute legal advice, nor does it establish an attorney-client relationship. Reference to any specific product or entity does not constitute an endorsement or recommendation by Bertadotto. The views expressed by guests are their own, and their appearance on the program does not imply an endorsement of them or any entity they represent. Please consult with an attorney on your legal issues.